Hi, Ken Ouellette with NFPA. I'm taking a minute to review the NFPA 2013 Hybrid and Electric Vehicle Emergency Field Guide. What caused me to come back and look at this was a recent car fire that took place in Washington State. So I was looking to see if the vehicle that was mentioned in the news release was included in our field guide, and it is. It's a Tesla Model S. And I'm looking at the guide, and it provides some basic information that a responder can use on scene to prepare them for the response and to guide them while they're on scene. It includes a diagram showing the location of the battery pack, the points that you should not cut, and it reminds you of some of the hazards that you need to be aware of when you're fighting a vehicle fire or responding to an incident involving an electric or a hybrid vehicle. The fire service knows that responding to an electric or a hybrid vehicle incident is not much different than responding to an incident involving an internal combustion engine. The things you need to be aware of is the possibility of stored energy in the vehicle battery and you don't want to penetrate the battery or cut any of the cabling that could be carrying the current. You also need to be aware of the possibility of stranded energy, energy that may remain in the battery following an incident, whether it's a fire or a collision. You need to be aware that these vehicles may not make any noise. You need to disable and immobilize the vehicle so that while you're operating, it will not move and strike responders, creating personal injury or worse. Responding to an electric vehicle incident is something the fire service can do safely with knowledge and with information. Our emergency field guide provides that knowledge and it's in a format that allows you to access it while responding or on scene. We also have a program designed for first responders to prepare you for responding to these incidents. It's online training. It's easy to do and it's packed with all the information you need to know to be able to do this job safely. Oh, and the last thing, this recent vehicle fire illustrated the need to have large amounts of water available to extinguish a vehicle fire involving an electric battery pack. This point was just reinforced by research done by our Fire Protection Research Foundation where they burned vehicle battery packs and then they evaluated the tactics. One thing they discovered about the several burns that they did is that you needed probably more than one engine company tank of water, probably two, if you were going to extinguish and keep the fire suppressed if the battery pack was involved. That's important information for responders. If an electric vehicle is involved with a high voltage battery pack, you may need to order additional resources earlier in the incident than you might have thought otherwise. You can do it. You have the tools, you have the knowledge, you have the capabilities. It's up to you to put it into action.